In addition to the land biomes of the earth, there are also water biomes of the earth. God has created the earth in such a way that there's in fact a variety of water biomes in the earth. This particular illustration is showing what we call the hypsometric curve. If you, were, if you took all of the altitudes above sea level and the depths beneath sea level for the rocks of the earth, and asked yourself, well, how much of, um, uh, what area of the earth's surface is above, let's say, 15,000 feet? It's going to end up a very small percentage of all of the earth's surface above 15,000 feet. As you come down to, let's say, 3,000 feet above sea level, how much of the Earth's surface is at that point? There's more Earth's surface at that point. So the hypsometric curve is giving you a sense of, whenever it's kind of flatter, it indicates that more of the Earth's surface is at that altitude above sea level or depth beneath sea level uh, than most of the rest of the world. So we've got a very little of the Earth is sitting very high above sea level. But a fair piece of the land of the Earth, more than half of the Earth, uh, the Earth's area anyway, on the continents, is between, let's say, 4,500 feet and 1,500 feet above sea level. Then there's a fair bit of area right here just below sea level uh, in what we call a shallow marine zone. There's a, a fairly significant part of the Earth that is thousands of feet beneath sea level, and there's a lot of the Earth that's actually sitting at uh, uh, miles beneath the uh, uh, present surface of the Earth. This is the hypsometric curve of the Earth represented before us. If you superimpose upon this the water cycle, the fact that evaporation occurs off of the water into clouds which move over the land, which drop the water onto the land, precipitating onto the land, and the water flows back into the ocean, creating this cycle that is continuously ongoing, then we can see why it is that there are different water biomes on the earth. So taking a closer look at the stuff above sea level, primarily above sea level, we see that as the rain falls on the land, it begins to flow back down into the ocean. As it does so, it cascades over the rocks, moving towards the ocean, creating a special water situation which, where we can create special organisms for that situation. We can create streams where organisms are in a, from a stream biome. Under these circumstances, the the water is, has got a lot of oxygen in it. It's cascading over rocks as it does so, as it foams there. Oxygen is dissolved into the water. There's usually a tremendous amount of oxygen dissolved in the water here. That makes it possible for many organisms to live in the stream biome situation. Yet at the same time, it's continuously running water. So certain kinds of organisms don't fare too well in it. If you are a swimmer, you're going to have to swim all the time. You're going to have to swim upstream all the time just to stay in one place. So only certain organisms can really do that and can do that effectively. Also, when it comes to the fish, if you are a fish that, that uh, uh, just lays your eggs down on the bottom and they're not sticking to anything, they're going to get washed downstream. So usually the, the fish of the streams are designed in such a way that their eggs stick to rocks. So there have to be very special designs for the stream biome situation. A set of organisms unique to the stream biome that you don't find in others. Now occasionally as the water is flowing back towards the ocean, it accumulates in lakes. It slows down and collects in basins, ponds, and lakes. And under these circumstances, you have a little different uh, set of characteristics for the water. Uh, first of all, there's less oxygen in that water. Second of all, very often it's deep enough that there can be dark places in the water which you don't find in streams. The lake biome then is created specifically to fit that particular set of conditions. 
fish and other organisms that don't require quite as much oxygen live in lakes. You don't have to worry about swimming upstream in order to stay in one position. So you can have fish that in fact all they do, they can stay in one position just by simply staying in the same position vertically. They just float there like the gar. Uh, special organisms, both plants and animals, are created for the lake biome. As the water cascades down from the land and begins to enter the ocean, we notice that there is a transition between the fresh water that we've already had, because when water is evaporated from the ocean, it leaves behind the salt. It's fresh water that in fact falls over the land. So it's fresh water that's in the streams, fresh water that's in the lakes. When that fresh water comes back to the ocean, it begins mixing with the ocean at the uh, juncture between these two, creating a, a place we call an estuary, a place where at the upside of the estuary, at the upstream side of the estuary, it's fresh water. At the downstream, it's the same kind of salinity as we find in the ocean. In between, we have various concentrations of salt transitioning from fresh to marine. The estuary allows for a completely different set of organisms to thrive. Only some organisms can actually survive the salty conditions, so many of the fresh water biome organisms don't live in the estuary. And in fact, the changing salt conditions of the estuary really limit how many organisms can live in there. Only a few types of plants can live under these circumstances. Mangroves are amazing sets of kinds of plants that can survive the salt. And a few other plants, then there are special organisms that live in these situations again. They have to be able to tolerate varying amounts of fresh water and salt water. The organisms that live in this uh, biome, in this situation are called estuary biome organisms. As we move into true ocean, as we get out of the zone where it's mixing fresh and salt water and now we're in the regular saltiness of the ocean, there is a zone near the shore which is affected by tides. It's an intertidal zone. There might be places where when the tide is high, these places are covered with water, when the tide is low, these places are exposed above the water. Only certain kinds of organisms can tolerate that. It's bad enough that you have to live in salty conditions. It's even worse if you spend half of your day, 12 hours a day underwater, and 12 hours a day above water. It's easier to find organisms that live entirely above water or entirely below. Very few organisms actually thrive in what's called the intertidal zone. The intertidal biome has specially designed algae and animals to live in that kind of situation. Off, offshore, a little bit deeper from the intertidal zone and below low tide, everything I'm now going to talk about in the ocean is below low tide, we find in certain places of the earth coral reefs and a coral reef biome. It's not in actually very many places of the Earth. It's got to stay within 25, 30 degrees maximum of the equator because the coral reef biome requires very warm temperatures and very warm water. The coral reef is actually built up from the bottom of the ocean at that point by organisms that grow uh, on top of one another and make their way towards the surface. Most of the coral reef biome is uh, constructed of sponges and corals uh, that are rather hard in, in structure, and they'll grow up and on top of one another, moving towards the surface of the water. Now these are animals, so they, it might at first seem odd that they should grow upward like plants do, but the reason they do grow upward is they have plankton, they have uh, algae living within the bodies of the coral and the uh, sponges, and those organisms need sunlight. So the coral and sponges grow up towards the surface to give more light to the algae that live in their bodies. The coral reef of all of the uh, biomes in the water 
has actually the largest diversity of organisms. More different kinds of organisms are found in the coral reef than any other, other biome of the water. And it's a beautiful place as well. Otherwise, that zone below low tide and down to about 200 meters beneath the surface uh, is called the shallow marine zone. In the shallow marine zone, we have the shallow marine biome. The reason 200 meters is significant is that's about as deep as light from the sun can penetrate the ocean. It's in that zone, the upper 200 meters of the, of the ocean, of 600 feet or so of the ocean depth, that, that organisms are living in the light. Now clearly if they're living towards the bottom, there's a lot less light. But it's below that zone, you don't have any light at all. In the shallow marine biome, we have a variety of organisms that can live on the bottom and in the uh, floating in the water uh, in that zone beneath low tide and down to uh, up to uh, uh, 600 feet below the surface. We have organisms living on the ocean, organism on the, on the, on the bottom. We have organisms that swim through it. Special designs for the intertidal uh, I'm sorry, shallow marine biome system. Below 200 meters beneath the surface, we are in absolute darkness. We are in the deep marine biome at that particular uh, position, at that depth. And under these conditions, we have special organisms to live in here. So we don't have organisms that can use photosynthesis to produce food. Uh, we have to rely on the biomatrix that can't produce quite as much food as the uh, algae can, as photosynthesis can. So there's not a lot of food in the deep marine biome zone. And so as a consequence, there aren't very many organisms. This would be the water biome that contains the fewest number of different kinds of organisms. And it's a weird world. The organisms don't need color because, of course, it's dark. Uh, they often don't even need to be opaque. Many of them are translucent or transparent. You can see through them. Uh, some of them carry their own light by uh, carrying f bacteria that bioluminesce, that produce their own, their own light, and they, they see others in that way, sort of like carrying a flashlight in this zone. Deep in the um, trenches of the earth, uh, there's a, a very different kind of set of organisms coming out of the hot uh, water vents at the bottom of the ocean, specially designed organisms to live under those circumstances. This is also very high pressure. These organisms have to live uh, in cold, high pressure, dark water with very few nutrients. Very special designs are required to live in the deep marine biome. Here we have a satellite photo showing several of the biomes that we've just talked about, the water biomes. Starting on the land of Australia here, we can see some of the streams that are flowing towards the, towards the ocean as uh, kind of lines. Maybe you can't see them at all where you're at. And then in the place where the stream water mixes with the ocean water, showing up as a, a bluish color here, these are the estuaries where fresh and salt water are being mixed. And then near the shore here, you'll find the intertidal zone. And if you go out away from shore, you have a huge coral reef here, the Great Barrier Reef, the largest coral reef in the world. Uh, the area around the coral reef is shallow marine. And then there's a cliff uh, that gets into very deep water where you have the deep marine region off to the upper upper right. Here's a similar photo in southeastern United States. We have Florida uh, with, uh, and it's really hard to tell, but there are streams that are carrying water down to the ocean. You've got streams in Georgia that are carrying water to the ocean. Uh, estuaries are hard to see in this situation, but they would be here along with the intertidal zones right at the shoreline. This uh, feature here on either side of, of uh, Florida shows the shallow marine zone and then a cliff uh, right off into deep marine in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Atlantic. And on a portion of the what's called continental shelf here, you find the Bahama 
islands that are themselves coral reefs. So what we have is not only a variety of climates on the land that in fact allow for a variety of biomes, we also have a variety of water biomes that God has created. Merely as a consequence of one, the uh, water cycle, and two, the fact that the oceans are made of salt water and that makes the, uh, the water that lands, that, that uh, falls on the land a different sort of water, fresh water, allowing for quite a variety of water organisms.